Hello, my name is Grace, and you're on the second week of Project 40's Collective Monthly Takeover. And for today, like I said last week, we were going to talk about diversity. Is it a practice or just a hot topic? And today, for this week, I would like to welcome Kaylin Clean. Hey. She is my best friend extraordinaire, but also <laughs> she's a theater student in the UTSC program with me yeah. since four years now. Four years now. Wow. And today we're going to be talking about white privilege, diversity versus inclusion, and a bunch of other things. <laughs> Like everybody talks a lot about racism, but nobody really talks about white privilege. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important to talk about white privilege because, like, not even just in theater, but in life itself, like white people just intrinsically have a privilege over people of color. Um, and we benefit even in ways we don't understand, and that that crosses over to the theater community as well. Yeah. Well, I agree with that because theater is the reflection of like the world around us. The stories that we hear are based off of real life people or the messages or theories that we have are based off of the societal um, environment that we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. So I guess going from there, how does that play into the idea of having diversity being implemented into projects like theater ones and then what does it mean to be inclusive versus oh that's a diverse project right there <laughs> you know um yeah no i agree with that i was uh doing some research a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. um and i found like a really inter interesting quote and i think it was um i'm going to pronounce this long. I don't know if it's Janet Sears or if you pronounce the D at the beginning. Um, amazing black playwright. Lovely, lovely person. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, in, uh, sorry, diversity is inviting people to the party and inclusion is asking them to dance. Um, and I thought like that was kind of a really interesting way to, to sum up um, not only in the theater community but everywhere mm -hmm. the difference between diversity and inclusion. And everybody's everybody's talking about diversity because it's, it is. Right now it is a very hot topic. Mm -hmm. um, and and while people, all these theater people are striving for diversity in their casts, in their crews, um, in their board of directors, all that sort of stuff, um, I'm not sure people are actually striving to to include these people, these people of color in their, their narratives and um, their stories rather than just saying like hey you're a person of color we don't want to be called out for being for being racist or for for not including uh, kind of trying to include you in our stuff so we're just gonna we're gonna here be in the show about a white person or and his or, dog <laughs> yeah or be in this show um, or direct the show that's about a white person's life or a white person's story, we need to work hard as harder as theater people to actually include these people and not just these people but these stories mm -hmm. um, that these people have and whether that means doing scripts by people of color or whether that means bringing these people of color in and being like, so we're doing Romeo and Juliet, how would you like to make this your own? Mm -hmm. Like interracial yeah. coupling. Yeah, exactly. Interesting because I did an interview with Chloe Hung for another project, mm -hmm. and she was talking about. Well, she's a writer for all of our yesterdays, and okay. you can find that in the um, 
Next Stage Festival from 2016. And she wrote about Nigerian sisters who were abducted by Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. And then um, one of the daughters, uh, one of the sisters uh, was going through this very interesting mental journey. Mm -hmm. And she's Chinese. Mm -hmm. She's a Chinese playwright, as people would label her, but she would be preferred to be called just a writer. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that like intercultural work is what she really strives for. Mm -hmm. And she's really interested in the story aspect, mm -hmm. which doesn't really have in her mind a lot of color based, mm -hmm. people of color narrative versus their narrative versus yeah. their narrative. She just says, this is a story we all need to know and mm -hmm. need to hear. And yeah. I think that's a really interesting mindset to have, to start doing that inclusion mindset. Mm -hmm. um, I guess for future projects, you were interested in doing something called, uh, like a show called Bent. Yeah. And you're in this dialogue with yourself right now yeah. about doing uh, the way of casting and yeah. I would like to would you like to share with our viewers yeah I mean, um sure yeah <laughs> I'll wait till the beeping's done <laughs> um so there's this amazing show called bent um and it's about being homosexual in the holocaust um and it's it's very very dark um but it's he's probably my favorite play um and I've wanted to direct it for a couple years. So I'm in the process of doing some um, brainstorming and doing some research, doing kind of that. Um, but I was potentially looking into um, colorblind casting versus not colorblind casting, um, whether or not I should cast two males as per um, the script's normal requirements, or whether I should adapt the males to females, or um, to, to kind of hint towards um, the, the feminism and that kind of um, male, male privilege over female privilege um, and, or whether or not I should cast um, a man and woman to, to point out the difference between um, what, what could have been, right? Like if, if homosexual people had had the, the higher level of power or something like that. So um, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do, but I'm really kind of interested in playing with that idea instead of just going for the, the regular, like, here's the cast, that's it, um, like, as per the script. So I kind of want to kind of want to play with a little, kind of look for some, some deeper meaning in there. And if that adds some diversity or some inclusion, great. And I'd, I'd love to find actors that are willing to kind of jump in and, and we can adapt and do that sort of stuff so that they feel included in the work that they're doing with me instead of just like, hey, you're the, you're the, the token person of color yeah. or you're the, you're the token female in the group or, or whatever. I want everyone to kind of hit that level of inclusion instead of just me striving for diversity in my cast. Yeah, I think for me, one of the, because I'm asking like, is diversity a practice or a hot topic? And we argue that it's a hot topic. I guess the next step to this question would be that why instead of diversity, we should be looking at inclusion. So that question itself mm -hmm. was very faulty. Yeah. Um, Inclusion should be a practice. Yes. That's what it should be. Yeah. And how do you think we should, like, how do we get to that level? Or as people who are going to come, go into this theater community together, mm -hmm. like, how do we partner with each other to make that a reality? I think first things first, as a white girl <laughs> and you as a person of color, we start there. Yeah. Um, but also, I think we kind of we kind of have to um, be open to to listening to each other in ways that we maybe don't normally do. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people have friends who are of color, and I think it's much easier to obtain inclusion with people you're friends with. I think even even when you're not friends with them, even if even if you're working with someone in a show or whatever that you you maybe don't like as much as you like everyone else that you still you still listen to their story and especially as directors and and producers and people who have 
these chances to make these these very big um, these very big shows that a lot of people can come see and come see these and listen to these really important narratives. I think you have to you have to break from the traditional scripting and you have to um, write and you have to do all these things and encourage the people around you to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Ad adapt shows, don't just be like, oh hey, we're doing Romeo and Juliet and we're gonna do it exactly like the script says. Play with it a little bit, throw in people of color, make it a, a heterosexual couple um, that are interracial, make it a, a homosexual couple, make it make it make the characters trans play with all these diverse aspects but bring in the people that are involved in that so don't be like oh it's an interracial couple but they both look white or oh hey we're gonna do a trans character but we'll let the straight white guy play it bring bring in all of these diverse voices and let them tell their own story don't try to make a story mm -hmm. essentially a, a, about this thing so don't don't write a trans story if you, if you don't have a connection to that mm -hmm. or don't write I, like, I wouldn't write a story about a person of color because I don't know what it's like to be a person of color but if you do end up writing a project that did have a person of color in it it would actually open more opportunities for someone who is a person like POC to come in and be like yeah. hey well, actually, for my culture, we see it like as this, yes. and then, oh, that's great, we can put that in Exactly. That's right. what I so, so like, work with the people that. around you. So, like, if I were to write a person of color, I I would be like, okay, so let's say I want to make the person Vietnamese, I'd come see you. Yeah. If I want to make the character black, I'd come, I'd find a friend, whoever that is black, and be like, help, help me make this a uh, real narrative. Maybe maybe it's your narrative, maybe it's your family's narrative, whatever you want, but like I don't have the right to forcibly write someone else's narrative without uh, without um, doing some research, you know what I mean? Like consulting, talking to people, because if I write a, a black narrative and I'm not black, like it's, it's, it's me forcing my, almost kind of like me forcing my white narrative on a black character, which is not helpful to the person who ends up playing that, right? And hopefully in that case, like if, if people do do that, that person can step into that role and be like, let's let's fix things. Yeah. Let's let's make this more connected to me, to my culture, so we can gain that actual genuine narrative. Mm -hmm. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just talked an awful lot. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I really appreciate cool. you. And so, for once again this week, we do have a blurb at uh, coming with this video. Um, there are some statistics from New York that I found, and you can find that. And look so smartical. I would like to thank the EDA or the Equity and Diversity within the Arts um, from University of Toronto for giving the funding for this project, but also for Project 40 for giving us the opportunity to talk about this. I would like to thank Peter Harrison for the music and for my friends who allowed me to be so, so weird. And for my family because they've been giving me so many things like my DNA and my, <laughs> my mother tongue and for my spirit. So. Yeah, I love you guys all. And I will see you next week when we are going to talk about frustrations that we may feel as people of color or of different sexual orientation and so on. And I'll have more friends coming in. Yay! See you next week! Okay, bye. Come on, come on. Look at all of this makeup oh, wait, I found wait, in the theater. Wait, what? Oh, oh. I messed that up real bad. Nice attention span, John. I see you doing work. I see you. I see you.